customer support at a fraction of the cost. Welcome, Joe. Uh, thank you, Rich. Um, uh, good, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to be switching over and taking control of the presentation here. Um, one of the things I'd like to start out with is discussing the goals of these Friday sessions. Uh, our goal of the Friday sessions is to dive into one business issue and quickly demonstrate how Autotask addresses it. Uh, they're going to be fast-paced, about 30 minutes. Uh, there is a recording, as Rich indicated, available for later review. Questions will be answered at the end of the 30 minutes if you want to stay on. And we're really going to be focusing on demonstrating the product with just a few intro slides. So in today's session, uh, we're going to start out by discussing today's business issue and the top five benefits of Client Portal. And it's really about a win-win for both you and your client. Uh, then we're going to go right into the demo, setting up Client Portal and using it, then adding some custom service request types and automation for escalation and notification. And then we'll talk about account activation options and um, something beyond tickets. The uh, Client Portal has projects and reporting options. And then I'll have a quick wrap-up. So the business problem that we're going to be diving in today is providing better customer support while reducing your cost. So really, this is the win-win for both you and your client. So how much of your time and your, your customer's time is spent checking on the status or checking on the updates on either a ticket or a project? And uh, when you get information or a problem from a, from, a, from a client, are you getting partial information about the problem? and then you need to call them up and leave messages to get for, uh, more details. Well, today's session is all about discussing how you can empower your clients and also streamline the process through the use of the Client Portal. So uh, I talked about the win-win of Client Portal. And really the first one is that clients can check on the status and updates themselves. They don't uh, need to phone you or leave a message or email you. The details are all available to them 24-7, both for tickets and projects. And they also have the entire history of previously closed tickets as well. So if they need, if they have a problem that they've experienced before, they can go out and find it. The customer is happy, and you spend less time on the phone with them, just answering simple questions, and more time resolving their issues. Uh, the next is really through the use of what I'll be showing uh, you, service request templates. You're going to be able to gather more specific details based on the type of problem. So you're going to be immediately uh, um, available to respond and to start resolving the issue as opposed to trying to gather additional details. The next is that um, there are some standard types of problems probably that, you, that, that your customers have that have a standard resolution or a list of at least first steps the clients should try. And giving these, to, uh, giving these to clients through the use of a knowledge base can eliminate a call or at least remove a list of possible causes because they've already tried a few things. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is workflow automation. And workflow automation can escalate the issue that they, that they submit and also send notifications based on the type of request. We'll be demonstrating that. And then uh, finally, you have uh, control over what clients can access. Things like um, beyond service tickets, uh, access to projects, reports, links, news items. Uh, we, uh, we spoke a lot here in, the, in terms of the win-win the about costs, but also uh, one of the things that we, we, we drive is that better client service leads to higher retention, which leads to higher revenue. So with that kind of introduction of the win-win of client portal, we're going to get into the demonstration. And we're going to start out by basic setup. So uh, the beauty of client portal is that once it's enabled, it's really ready to use out of the box. So uh, what we're going to do first is I'm going to just activate my own internal resource for accessing the client portal, and we'll look through the client portal capabilities. Uh, then what we're going to do is do, do some minor customization that you might want to do when you activate, and that is kind of add your own logos, look at some custom links, uh, at least review what the security settings are for your clients, and then we're going to try test uh, creating a ticket through the client portal seeing how it actually operates for your users. So with that said, I'm going to go over to Autotask. <clears throat> and one of the things that I've done here, and you all have, is I've actually done a search for my last name. Because uh, rather than activating it for an individual user, uh, you really probably want to test it on yourself. And you can actually activate yourself um, uh, under your account zero. And I've done that here. So you can see my name, 
And initially, um, all uh, once you have a uh, client portal active for your system, all of your individual any all of your individual accounts are available. I'm going to um, edit my contact record, and one of the things you'll see is that there's a client portal tab. And um, all you need to do in terms of, uh, of of going in for any individual any any individual contact is go in and then choose to activate the client portal for that individual user. So um, uh, in terms of it, first of all, I'll activate myself as a user, and then what you'll see is that there's a simple check mark that you can do to say, I want to activate the client portal for that user. So I activated myself as a user, and then I'm going to go in and activate the client portal, and now I have full access to the client portal if I save and close. One of the things that happens is once you activate any user, they will get an email message. See, I'm getting an email message here. And it's a standard welcome message that your users will get. Your, your users will get welcome them, indicating their client portal, providing them information about the client portal, how they get to the client portal, a username, a temporary password that they have, and also um, a link that actually includes both their username and password that they can use as a shortcut if they want to. A lot of people will just copy and use this as a shortcut off their desktop to get immediately into the client portal. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to use this link with the temporary password to get into uh, a client portal, again, as Joseph Rourke, as one of the users, just to get a, get a view of what is in the client portal for myself before I activate it for anyone. And one of the things you'll see is that there's an initial welcome message um, um, identifying the user with some options of creating a ticket, viewing a ticket, searching ticket. Because the client portal is, in and of itself, from a help desk point of view, focused on service tickets. So you can see the options, new tickets, see your own tickets, um, take a look at uh, open tickets, look at recently completed tickets, or do a full ticket search. So they have full capability of what you've chosen to show them in terms of service tickets. They also have project access if you've been granted it. So they'll be able to go in and see if you want to add an individual client as a member of a project, um, a full project, either just their tasks or the full schedule. Uh, they'll also have access, if you're granted, to reporting. So past invoices, block, block hour, um, retainer or incident uh, reports or ticket reports. I'm going to skip manage for a second and talk about uh, search. Um, if you're using the um, knowledge base, you can publish knowledge base articles to the client portal so that they'll be able to search the client portal for self-help. And then there'll be a series of custom links that you can create um, that may go out to other uh, areas, maybe your corporate website, maybe a, a featured offer, um, maybe um, uh, you know, whatever additional links that you want to add to the system. So in terms of um, one of the things that you'll see here is when I added the user, uh, I actually um, created this user as an administrator. And when I go back in, I'll, I'll tell you a little about security. And when you're actually activating an individual user, you will indicate whether they are a basic user, and that is that they can really work on tickets, but not much, not much else, tickets in their own projects. They're a manager, and that is that they can see their work and everyone else's work, or they're an admin, and that adds an additional tab here, which is users. And one of the nice things about this is that you can allow your clients to manage all the end users that you should be working for. So rather than you dealing with um, a new um, contact that comes in or phone numbers or records, this really opens it up to uh, your primary contact at a customer site where they can either modify or add new contacts to the client portal, but also as a record in your database. So you're getting uh, where you may um, have information about five of the people they will put in the rest of their staff that they want to have access both to the client portal or to even phone in, you'll have the contact information. So very, very powerful for there. It also allows them to grant access or not to the client portal for individual users. Um, so in terms of uh, with, uh, with that said, one thing that I want to do is just briefly go over into the administrative panel for, uh, for client access. And we'll just take a look at a couple of the additional options that we talked about. Um, one of the things that we came into the client portal, and I will go over that in a second, you'll actually kind of see is that this is uh, just, uh, this is the actual name of your site. I actually call the name of my site Autotask Friday Coffee, but that's just a label. 
The first thing in terms of customizing, going beyond this standard functionality that I would actually say is that you really want to go into, um, go into the administrative panel and there's a section for client portal and you'll actually see customize options. And one of the things that you can do, um, in addition to things like modifying that additional email template that you saw, you can say anything you want in that email welcome template that, you re that we received, but you may want to actually add some of your own logos. So there will be a logo that will appear at the top of the, uh, at the, top of the login page, and I'm going to go out and uh, add that one. And then there's also a logo that's going to appear at the top of uh, the client portal in, in the welcome uh, section. And I'm going to go out and then choose that label to appear. And basically this, what this is doing is personalizing the client portal for your use. Another thing that in terms of uh, uh, customization you may want to look at is um, the news item. One of the things is that there is a news item that appears uh, it's a, a, a bar that indicates a, right now as default it's a welcome message, but um, the welcome message is basically something that we default to that kind of welcomes people to client portal, but you can use the news item section to put any information that you want to provide out to your users. <clears throat> and, and finally what we also have is we have the custom logos or uh, the, the URLs that appear. So I had put like our corporate website, but you can control really what you want to appear in terms of these items. And this is really kind of the first stage.